Hello everyone. There's actually no one here yet, but I'm gonna wait. I'll wait here and see if anyone turns up. Maybe I'll play my guitar while I'm waiting. Still got five minutes till the class starts, and this guitar is probably out of tune as well at the same time. Hi Sue again, Joe, good to have you with us. I'm just literally playing my guitar whilst I was waiting for people. Oh, I've got seven people watching now, perfect. Where are we tuning in from? If you are tuning in from different parts of the country, I know I've had people from all over the place, some people from Saudi Arabia, some people from France, Dave, how's it going mate? Some people from Langley Park, like Dave. Um, if you are in a different part of the country, or if you're in a different country, then give us a shout out. All right, Joe mate. So, this is going to be a bit of a punchy yoga class. I'm gonna teach you a little bit um, to start with. This is the first Ashtanga class that we've got together. Um, so it's gonna develop over the weeks as we go. Before we start, I'm starting to do the Wolf of the Week again. Hey Anne, how's it going? Yvonne, doing the Wolf of the Week. Now, the Wolf of the Week is getting presented to a person each week. Now you'd think the Wolf of the Week would be on a Sunday or at the end of a, on a Friday, but I'm going to do it on a Monday just to spice things up a little bit. And my Wolf of the Week this week is Harry. Harry Mortimer, well done. You are the wolf of the week. If I could give you this, then I would give you it, but I can't, obviously, for obvious reasons. So you are the wolf of the week. Um, right, so before we actually start the class, I have to go through a little bit of safety stuff. Um, this is a punchy, um, all right, Dave, mate, good to see you. One of the regulars on a Monday night as well here in Cyberland, um, Cyber Yogis. Um, anyway, go back to safety. Now, looking at, hi Julie, with safety, if any of the movements are too hard for you, then obviously don't do them, all right? This isn't about putting you at any risk at all. It's about you enjoying the class, getting a little bit of a sweat on, getting a, um, a little bit of a, a stretch, and also strengthen up uh, a lot of musculature at the same time. I love Ashtanga. It is, it's a set sequence of movements, so it doesn't change when you do it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretty much, all right, Janelle, aye, aye. Um, I'm gonna be changing up the usual, the usual Ashtanga routine, tone it down a little bit. There's some really crazy movements in there. Um, we're not gonna be doing those as like jump throughs. It does go into things like headstands and things like that. So it's basically about learning the fundamentals of it. Before we start, and like every single class, we go with a little bit of breath work first, then we go into the movement aspect, which I can't wait to do. Um, I'm really enjoying these uh, live classes, actually. I love taking classes anyway in general, but this is just a weird thing to do. Um, me doing this by myself um, here, but I'm not by myself because all you guys are watching. Um, yeah, so we do the breath work, we do the movement aspect, and then when we come to the end, do a little bit of a sound bath, I am, and hi, Joan. Well done, Harry, yeah, um, from Joan. So, yeah, the sound bath at the end, I'm gonna do a little bit of a guided meditation. If you just excuse me, I'm gonna like zone out from the, the messages that pop up and um, carry on with the class so we can get straight to it. 
Now the power breath is really important, especially in these times. Power breath allows you to tap into um, these respiratory muscles, okay? And these respiratory muscles are really important, obviously, for us to breathe. I've talked a little bit about different breathing techniques in the, the past classes, Hatha, and also the restorative yoga. And the way of breathing is, firstly, trying to connect into your body and allow yourself to use the full capacity of the lungs. But then we go into the power breath, which actually, um, it's more of a forceful breath. And then we go into the Ujjayi breath, which is something that is a constant through the whole of the Ashtanga routine. And basically, it's a switching from this, this fiery place, all right, to a more of a, like I said the other day, a rest and digest place, somewhere that allows us to step behind this um, discomfort. And that's where it will, will be. There's usually in the Ashtanga routine, there's a lot of Ujjayi breath, five breaths in, most of the post, in all of the postures, um, unless it's in one of the uh, vinyasas, one of the, the movements uh, aspects, like a sun salutation. So find a comfortable position. Hopefully you've got a mat, uh, like me. If you haven't got a mat, then put down a, a towel, all right? Put a towel down. It doesn't really matter. Um, hopefully you won't get any carpet burns um, and the towel doesn't slide, slide about too much. But, you know, adapt and overcome. That's what we're trying to do at this moment in time. Even get the kids involved, all right? They'll, I'm sure they'll enjoy it. And we're doing some weird breathing techniques as this... Um, this yoga progresses over the days. Now I'm just moving back a little bit here so you can see me. Find a nice uh, comfortable postural position. So always starts at the hips. If you haven't got a, if you haven't got, if you can't keep yourself in a, a cross leg position, then feel free to stick something underneath your bum. I something like this, a pillow. Gives you this a little bit of a propped up position, it gives you this anterior tilt of the pelvis and everything has a little bit of a knock on effect up through the posture, um, up through your posture once you start to tilt those hips forwards. The shoulders come back, you draw in with the chin, you lengthen up through the spine. Now the power breath, I'm going to show you the power breath and then we're going to do it together. Now the power breath is a sharp, forceful inhale into the lungs. And then it is like a sigh out. You're just letting the breath release from your body. So I'm gonna show you once without any instruction and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so that is the power breath. We'll do 10 breaths of that. If you wanna give that a go by yourself now whilst I'm talking, then feel free to do it and I'll, usually with the power breath, I do it one after the other really quick, but this time round, we're gonna do it a little bit slower and it's about trying to use the full capacity of your lungs. So if you're in a seated position now, close your eyes, take your palms down towards your knees, and palms, uh, so your palms facing upwards on your, on your knees or even on your lap, close your eyes, and then just move from the outside world in, straight into the breath. Slow everything down for this first part. And watch the breath move in through your nose, and down in towards the lungs. Feel the stomach rise. Feel the stomach fall and let the shoulders fall away but not losing the posture. Let the eyelids go relaxed. Let the cheeks Sag down and keep following that breath in and out. And imagine it, this white mist moving in through the nose, down into the lungs, hitting the bottom of the lungs and then drawing back up through the nasal passage again, sweeping out in front of the face and back in through the nose. And try to make every single breath a little bit deeper and just think about this belly button. Imagine your belly button rising away in front of you. Slowly release through the nose. Now I want you to take one big inhale and just hold it there before we start the power breath. With pursed lips, just blow it out. Release everything down. Let all of the stress 
Remove from your body. Let your central nervous system link into the breath. And you start moving into that parasympathetic part. It's rest and digest. Now, 10 breaths together. Take a big inhale, send it down into the bottom of the lungs and the chest. And exhale. Big inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Big inhale. And exhale there. Release the whole of the breath. Don't force it. Just let it move out the body. Inhale. Use the full capacity of the lungs. Exhale. Five more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale from the mouth. Three more. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. Feel the body slow down. No judgment. Inhale. Exhale. Don't narrow your experience of this by judging what you're doing. Just inhale. Experience the breath. Exhale. Keeping the eyes closed, slow everything down. And just more, more of this wave breathing. Send the breath down into the stomach. Feel the stomach rise, feel the stomach fall, feel yourself start to take a step back. Slow down, relax, release the breath from your nose. Slowly open your eyes there. Now, we move into the Ujjayi breath. The Ujjayi breath is this constant that we do all the way through the class. Ujjayi breath, all right, and it's gonna look really weird. Um, when you're in, when you're in a samastiti position, all right, don't worry what that means at this point in time. It's a standing position that all of the, the standing postures uh, start from in the Ashtanga sequence and you stare at the end of your nose like this Yeah, so you're staring at the end of your nose. I call it a drishti point So one of the drishti points is the end of your nose and the ujjayi breath is you create this restriction at the back of your throat And you create this oceanic sound try it yourself now What that does is it allows you to regulate the breath down into your lungs and then regulate the breath out through your um, out through your lungs as well at the same time. So when you're, you've gone through a little bit of a punchy sequence or you're in a hard posture, we call this thing in, uh, in yoga tapa, all right? So tapa is self-discipline. Self-discipline of being able to link into the breath when you're in a place of discomfort. Now, you're gonna be in a place of discomfort. I will be in a place of discomfort in certain parts, of don't be scared, all right? Like I said, any of these feel uncomfortable, then please stop um, and please just work on the side of caution. If you can't do something, then don't let your ego take over and try to, try to push into it and hurt yourself. But we always go into that Ujjayi breath. We go into the Ujjayi breath, we step back behind the discomfort, we disconnect from it, and that allows us to be more present in the posture and become mindfully aware of the body. Because if you're thinking in your mind, get me out of here, then you're not actually thinking of where your positioning is. All right. So a couple of Ujjayi breaths and then we get straight into the action. Take your hands down onto your knees again. Close your eyes. Create this restriction in the back of the throat as if you imagine you are fogging a mirror up. Take an inhale down into the lungs, feel the stomach rise, feel the stomach fall away as you exhale through the nose, inhale, exhale, I'm going to inhale for a count of five, exhale for a count of seven, inhale for one, two, three, four, five, exhale for seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, inhale, five, one, two, Three, four, five, exhale, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. Do one more breath by yourself. Now take a big inhale. Hold. Feel this energy. Start to get this body ready for action and then big whoosh through the mouth. Open the eyes there. Okay, let's do this. Bring yourself to your mat or your towel or whatever you're using. Now, before I do anything, I like to warm up the wrist. These are one of our main base support. So, this is a really cool warm up for you. I'm going to come a little bit closer so you can see. Give you a couple of angles. Take your hands down underneath your shoulders, knees directly underneath the hips. Spread the fingers apart as much as you possibly can. You should be able to see the fingers there. Spread them out. Try and turn the crease of the elbow towards the front of the room and activate. You should feel this activation underneath the armpits there as the lats engage and a little bit of the posterior rotate cuff as well at the same time. Start to rotate round the hands. We did this on the session the other day, but I've got a couple more stretches for you here. Come back round the opposite way. Good. And then come round into this neutral position. From there, I want you to bring the heels of the hands together. If that's too much, then bring the hands out a little bit further. Come side to side. There's a little bit of a pinch in there. It's not too bad, all right? Um, obviously, you don't want any pain, but there may be a little bit of pinching through the wrists. Start to roll round. If you are finding this really hard, then I've got a wrist uh, mobilization video on my YouTube channel. Come back round the other way. Good. Okay, from there, what I want you to do, I want you to take the fingertips and try and turn them towards you. And then sit back onto your heels. So if you see me here, I've got my toes tucked. Get a little bit of a stretch through the bottom of the foot. Working through this place where we get quite tight sometimes. So we get this, some sort of conditions like plantar fasciitis, um, which can give us a whole deal of trouble at the bottom of our feet. So at the same time, we're getting this big stretch. If that's too much for you, come onto the front of the feet. You'll probably get even more of a stretch there. Keep rocking back and forth. Inhale up. Exhale back. Good, next one from here. Give the wrist a little bit of a, a waggle. Use that word. Um, I don't know if I made it up or not, but we're gonna, we're gonna use it. Take both fists together. All right, from there. Okay, both fists together, place them down onto the floor, and what you try to do is not let your fingers flick out like so, and you don't have to get as far as me, obviously I've done this a fair bit, you're going to pull the elbows up towards each other, and then slowly come back down, you inhale up, exhale come down, inhale up, exhale come down, inhale up, Exhale, come down. What you'll probably find is the fingers will want to split out, all right? That's these muscles, these extensors getting really, really tight. Okay, keep moving through that. A little bit of tightness through the front of the wrist, maybe start to move the wrist through again. Grab the little spongy part, turn it around. Grab the other spongy part, start moving this oil, the joints, the sound, all your fluid. Take the hands, and what I want you to do here, I want you to extend. Relax, extend, relax, extend, extend, extend. Keep going like this, fast as you can. 10, nine, eight. Wow, it looks like my fingers are wavy on the screen. Three, two, one. Give them a shake off there. All right, tuck the toes underneath if you can, and then I just want you to do a little bit of a bounce. All right, from there for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one. Onto the front of the feet. If this is too much again, then just go slowly into it. All right? I just want you to roll from left to right. Start moving through the ankles a little bit there. We'll start to mobilize through the different joints as we go through, but you know what? The Ashtanga routine is really good at doing that anyway. You'll be hitting the whole of the body here as we start to kick off. This hasn't started yet, by the way. This is not the Ashtanga routine. All right, from there, take your hands up into the sky, tuck underneath with the toes, sit back onto the heels again, and drop your hands over the back of your head, pinning the elbows in towards your ears, 
Extend up again, look up towards the thumbs. This will look like a very familiar position as we go on. Head comes back, come back down with the thumbs. Inhale up with hands, look up. Exhale, head comes forwards, hands come down. Inhale, look at the hands. Exhale, hands come over the top of the head again. Inhale up. Exhale down. Good. Take the hands down into this four point kneeling position. Go into the fronts of the feet. We're going to go into our first downward dog. Hopefully, most of you have tried a downward dog before. I'll show you how to do it as we go through. And we're going through the first thing, this, the first part of the series is two types of sun citations, so you know, scar A and B. Now, they are a sequence of movements. I'm going to do them slowly the first time around. We'll, we'll start to build the speed as we go, because you do them five times through. Now, from there, take the hands out one place, tuck the toes, and then drop, uh, or pull the knees up off the floor. And then what I want you to do for me is create this flat back position. Don't go into a rounded position with your back. Drop back with the head down towards the floor. Look at the, the toes. And then start to straighten the legs out. Don't straighten the legs if you're compromising this straight spinal position. All right, so as you inhale, push the bum to the sky. As you exhale, drop the heels towards the floor. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower heels. Look at between the hands. Take the right foot up into the sky, and right foot comes as far forward as you can. If you can't get it as far forward as I have, then just come from this knee position and bring the right foot through. Pick up the back knee, left foot comes up to meet right, and we come into this nice flat back position. All right, you can bend your knees slightly if you want to. Flat back position, fingertips to the floor, looking long. I'm trying to do this without my head going out the screen. Forward fold down. Try and straighten out the knees, slight micro bend there. Grab onto the angles, pull the head down towards the knees. Push the knees back, but like I said, keep that little micro bend there. Bend the knees, hands come together. Dip the bum down towards the floor. Look up towards the thumbs. Pin these arms in towards each other. All right, we can do this really flaccid position, or we can go bang, we can grab elbows together, activation through all this musculature through our back. Look up at the fingers, fingers are apart. Look at the thumbs, that's a drishy point. Hands come down by the sides, this is the Samastiti position. Now, finding position, one step back from the front of the mat. All right, this is Samastiti. Whenever you're in Samastiti, looking at the end of the nose, Cross eye, ujjayi breath. So find that position. We always start here. You compose yourself before we start. It's like you're standing with attention, but with the fingers apart. Squeeze and tuck through the bum cheeks, ground into the floor through the feet, shoulders and back. Inhale, both hands into the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Come into that forward fold. Position, Uttanasana, fingertips hit the floor, look long, and then from there, it's supposed to be a jump back, we're going to actually step back for this first one. So you plant the hands onto the floor, right foot comes back, left foot comes back, and then we go into this, this pose called Urdhva Mukha Svasana, upward facing dog. Now upward facing dog is this posture here. All right, we're dropping through the hips, we're drawing the shoulders back, squeezing the bum cheeks to protect the spine. Now that might be a little bit too much for you, especially if I'm talking and you're still in that position there, and you're like, shut up, get out of it. So what I'm gonna do, come onto your knees there. There's different ways that you can do this. Because usually when we do the jump back, we go into something called chaturanga. I'll show you that on the next time round for this sun salutation. But you can come onto your knees here, all right? Or you can come down into the Sphinx pose. And it'll just protect your back a little bit more. But this is traditionally how you do it, on the front of the feet. If you want to make it a little bit easier, just have it so the toes are tucked underneath. Draw the shoulders back, exhale into downward facing dog, into Adho Mukha Svasana. All right, if you're wondering what these words that I'm saying, these are the Sanskrit words and that originally these postures came from and when they were written in India 
a long, long time ago. We look in between the hands. I want you to bend your knees, square the knees out to the side and jump towards the front of the mat. Doesn't have to be as quiet as that. And just go for a little jump first of all. We come into this flat back position again. We exhale forward full. Hands come together, we rise into the sky. So we do exactly the opposite. Look at the thumbs and then exhale down into Samasthiti. All right, we're gonna go through this next time round, we're going to Chaturanga. Now, if you haven't got much upper body strength, then just go into that upward facing dog instead. Don't compromise the position if your elbows are splaying out to the sides. I'll show you now. Inhale up, both hands. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Fingertips at the floor, push the bum towards the rear. Palms flat down and we jump back this time. So we jump back. Straight into this half press position, Chaturanga Dandasana. You see my head there? And then we come into, as we extend the elbows, into upward facing dog, we draw the shoulders back, and then you exhale back into, as, took, as you took the toes into downward facing dog, you breathe it out there. We actually do five breaths here, Ujjayi breath. Some deep breathing going on there. All right, probably disturbing people if <laughs> you're doing this with other people around, but hey ho, tapper, self-discipline. Stick to where you are, don't worry about anyone else. All right, look in between the hands, bend the knees, take a little jump up. Place the feet down, look long again. Look long towards the front, flatten that back out. Exhale, forward fold. Hands come together, rise up into the sky. Exhale, hands come down. Quickly before we go on, I'm just going to show you that jump back again. When I'm jumping back from this position, you can bend your knees so you get that good connection with the floor. And I'm jumping down into a Chaturanga Dandasana. Now, these are the two options that I want you to do as we speed up for this next time round. First one is jump back straight into high plank. Next one is you jump into Chaturanga Dandasana. You jump back. Half crescent position, all right? Quite a stressful position, that. And then you come into the upward facing dog from there. Okay, exhale back into downward facing dog. One second, I'm just gonna check that. I've got the lighting on properly here. That's a bit better, cool. All right, into downward facing dog. I think that's where we were. Exhale there. Move into the Sujai breath again. Look in between the hands. Jump in between the hands. Hands come together. Sorry. Go into this flat back position. Forward fold. Okay, bend the knees slightly. Hands come together. Rise into the sky. Look at the thumbs. As you inhale, exhale down into Samasthiti. Now we're going to do two more. I'm going to do it quicker this time. So get ready. Hands down by the sides in Samasthiti, hands into the sky, look at the thumbs, pin the elbows together, exhale, forward fold, inhale, halfway lift, flat back position, jump back, exhale, inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog, breathe it out there. Couple of breaths there, we're supposed to do five, but we want to move on quite swiftly. Look in between the hands, bend the knees, jump towards the front, straight into the flat back position. As you inhale, exhale, forward fold, head down. Hands come together, rise up into the sky. Exhale down into Samasthiti, a little bit faster again this time round. Don't worry if you don't get through as quick. We'll meet you down in, uh, up in Samasthiti. Hands down by the sides, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, jump back. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take your breaths there, five breaths. Now, I'm showing you this a little bit slow time, the first couple of times around, just to keep the form. Form is key because we don't want to Stress the body too much that we cause any injury, all right? And only work to your own limitations, as I've said before. Last breath, inhale. Jump forwards. In between the hands, 
Look long, shuffle the feet if you didn't get there. Exhale, forward fold. Hands come together, rise into the sky. Exhale, hands down by the sides. All right, there is your Surya Namaskar in. What does Surya Namaskar be? I'm gonna show you it now quickly and then we'll go through it together. If you wanna do it with me and you know it, then feel free to do an extra one. Just hold it there, don't copy off me yet. Okay, so that's Surya Namaskar B, and that's the full pace of it. So quite a few different movements there. We have face pose, Virabhadrasana, Warrior One, which are two different movements that we've added to that first sun salutation. So this is actually quite a hard pose if you do it properly. Face pose, hands down by the side, Samastiti. Drop the fingertips to the floor, push the bum out. See, I'm not in a, a humped back position. Flat back, inhale, hands come up, look up at the thumbs, pin the elbows towards each other really hard, push the bum backwards, not the knees forwards, exhale, forward, fold, inhale, halfway lift, fingertips to the floor, flat back position, hands down onto the mat, jump back again, remember you can jump straight into high plank instead of that chaturanga, that press position, draw the shoulders back. Exhale into downward facing dog. Very similar to the first Surya Namaskar. Now, right foot comes up into the sky. Push off that back foot. So you've got the heel off the floor. Peel up, right foot through. If you've got your feet shoulder apart, you should have the floor. Sorry, sometimes the connection is dropping out there. Push the front knee out. Squeeze through this back leg. Set this foundation before you start moving the rest of the body. Push the knee out, hips facing towards the front of the mat, hands come up into the sky, 90 degree bend through that front leg, inhale up. Exhale, hands down. You can either go straight back in the plank or you go into Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, opposite side. Left foot up, peel up. Back, heel hits the floor. Same again, sweep the hands up into the sky. Exhale, hands come down. Exhale. Chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down, facing dog. Breathe it out there. Only another four to do. <laughs> Look in between the hands, jump through. So use that down, facing dog as the rest position. Now from there, look long. Exhale, forward fold, head down, bend the knees, rise the hands into the sky, sit into this chair or this fierce pose, Utkatasana, spread the fingers out, feels lovely there, feel the burn in the thighs, exhale up into Samastiti again. Always finishing in Samastiti. Look at the end of the nose, calm that breath down, Ujjayi breath. I'll only do another two of those, and then we'll go on to the standing series. Fingertips hit the floor, rise up in the face pose, sit back, arms up, inhale, exhale, forward fold, head down, inhale, halfway lift, plant the hands, exhale back, inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, downward, Face and dog. Set yourself up for Virabhadrasana and Warrior One. Strong pose. Right foot comes forward in between the hands. Back heel hits the floor. Sweep the arms up into the sky. Hips facing forwards. Inhale. Exhale, hands down. Back into Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Exhale, down facing dog. Breathe it out. Feel the body start to rise and heat now. 
If you're holding your breath, as I'm probably doing because I'm trying to talk at the same time, then you're going to get really hot. Inhale, look up. Make sure you're taking on water at these different times as well. Exhale, hands down, feet back. Chaturanga Dandasana, or just that plank position. Inhale up. Exhale, downward facing dog there. Breathe it out. Switching from this fiery place, moving to this cool place. Step behind the discomfort from the heat. Look in between the hands. Jump up. From there, look long. Bring your tips to the floor. If that's too much, you can come down with the hands onto the shins if you want to. Exhale, forward fold. Sit down. Rise the hands up into Utkatasana. Feet your spores. Exhale into Samastiti. We'll do one more, a little bit quicker. Like I said, don't worry if you can't keep up. Should be feeling warm now. That's what the sun salutation is. It's a little bit of a warm up for the series. Okay? Feel free if you want to stop at any point as well. Alright, hands down by the sides. A little bit quicker this time. Drop through. Fingertips to fly. Inhale up. Hands into the sky. Exhale forward full. Head down. Push the knees back. Inhale. Look long. Exhale. Jump back. Chaturanga, upward facing dog, Urdhva Mukha Svasana, exhale, Adho Mukha Svasana, downward facing dog, right foot into the sky, right foot forwards, drop the back heel, rise up with both hands, inhale, exhale, hands down, inhale, half, oh, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog, if you find yourself Creeping up the mat, then reset on the next time round. Left foot comes forwards, back, heel hits the floor. Inhale up into the sky, into Virabhadrasana, 90 degrees. Push that knee out, straight through the back leg. Exhale, Chaturanga. Last one before we go to a couple of good hamstring stretches. My mat is walking out of this shot as I go. Look in between the hands. This is what happens with live <laughs> classes. Look long, exhale, forward full, bend the knees, rise up with both hands into Utkatasana. I look, my hands are together. I'm pinning my arms in towards my ears. Push the bum back. Don't push the knees forwards. Exhale, stand up. Have a drink there if you've got a drink. I'm going to reset the position of my mat. Just so you can see it. All right, I'm going to quickly grab a quick drink as well. And then we're going to the standard postures. Now I'm going to show you, maybe from a front way on here, turning through to you, but I want you to do it at the front of your mat if you've got one. Take one pace back from the front of the mat. We've got Padangastas and Padastasana. Feet together, we're in Samastiti. Hands come onto the hips. From there, we jump, feet apart, look up towards the sky, squeeze the bum, protect the, the back. Exhale with a flat back. Hands come down and you grab the big toes from the inside. Middle and index finger underneath you. Pull up onto the big toes, push down with the big toes. Pull the elbows out to the side. Head comes down towards the knees. If you're trying to pull your head in between your legs, with you dry breath there. If that's uncomfortable, ease up a little bit. You don't have to get down to your toes either. You can grab onto your ankles if you want to. It doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't about being good at anything. This is your own journey. That's what yoga is, a self-unfoldment. Well, probably folding yourself up. <laughs> rather than unfoldment sometimes. Look long, flat back position. All right, try and pick your feet up, bouncing on your heels, and then take your hands underneath. Padastasana. Bend the knees if you need to. Drop the head through again. Splay the elbows out to the side, pull the head in between the knees. Five breaths there again. Next pose is going into Uttita Trikanasana, which is 
Triangle, extended triangle pose. Bit of a tricky one. I'm probably going to turn round for it as well, just so that you can have a better view. In fact, let's just open up. I think everything I'm doing is opposite to you anyway. All right. From there, pick up the, the toes again. Hands come onto the hips. Straighten up through the chest into a flat back position and rise up into this uh, standing position. And then hands come back, down by the sides, feet come back together, all right? So there's the first couple of postures. Now I'm gonna open out here into something called trick, uh, teacher trick and asana. Hands are down by the sides, I take my left leg back, hands come out, I turn the feet back to the rear. Back foot is a 45 degree angle. Front foot is towards the front of the mat. And I see I haven't got a bend in this front knee. I'm trying to square off my shoulders towards the front here. See a little reach out from that position. And what I want you to do, still a little bit of a bend in this knee to protect it, pendulum down with the hands. Now there's different positions here you can go further up the leg that you want to. What I want you to think about when you're here is right hand has got to be extended all the way over the left. Hip has got to be, as you exhale, pulling yourself back, stay here. If you can go a little bit further down, go further down. If you can grab onto your big toe, grab onto your big toe. You can go palm flat to floor, go palm flat to floor. It just depends on your own flexibility. I'm guessing probably most people are around that angle. Point, spread the fingers out, look up at that top thumb. That's your gaze point, your drishti point. Ujjayi breath, don't let the breath go erratic. Rise up to the top. Five nice long breaths there. Okay, we move our feet round to the front of the mat again. We reach out, straight through this front leg. Imagine the legs are a pair of scissors pulling towards each other. Come down again. Grab onto the ankle, toe, or have the palm to the floor again. Draw the shoulder back. Now in this position here, extend the triangle. The next one I find is one of the trickier movements. Breathe out. Make your dry breath. Pull that hip back every breath. This back hip needs to be rotating upwards towards the sky. It doesn't matter about this arm drawn backwards. If the arm's forwards, then that's fine. If it's too hard again, maybe just bring your hand onto your hip and rotate backwards. All right, rise up into the sky. Really. From there, turn back through towards the back of the room. Hands onto the hips. If you haven't got this back foot at a 45 degree angle, you're not going to be able to square the hips off towards the back of the mat, so make sure that you do that. Now, this is the revolve triangle. Okay, if I've read the trikonasana, hands into onto the hips, right hand into the sky. Again, what I would say is go down towards the angle, and then just try and draw the left elbow back. I actually feel more comfortable when I'm on the outside of my left foot, and then the left arm comes up, and you look at the thumb, stay there, keep it there, Stay strong, and only move your head last. Move the eyes, and then rise up with the body. Tough one, okay, really tough. Let's go through that again. Hands onto hips, opposite way around. Back foot turns 245. Front foot, point towards the front of the mat. Left hand comes into the sky. Left hand comes down towards that left angle. Okay, and bring our hand onto our hip here, which feels like it gives a little bit more stability than having our hand up into the sky. If you fall over, don't worry. Okay, obviously, try and keep your balance there. If you're near a wall, you get a little bit more. Turn up, look at that thumb. Stay there, revolve. This is what it is, breathe. Head moves. Body moves and we slam straight up into Samasthiti from that position. Okay, tough one, yeah? Next one, Utita Pasvakanasana, all right, which is extended side angle. Draw the shoulders back from this position. Gonna open up with the left, all right? It's usually the right hand side that we do it with in Ashtanga, but just to stay in this position where we are now. And like I said, everything's probably backwards um, for you on that video. All right, step back with the left foot. From there, turn through. A little bit different from the last one. Now, the difference is that 
you are going to bend through this front knee. We come into warrior two, okay? Warrior two, bit of Vidrasana. So you look over that middle finger on the front hand. And then you bring your, your revolve down, bend through this front knee. I'm gonna move a little bit further back on my mat so you can see again. And you can go, if you've got something to prop underneath here, go into like a pod position if you find it hard to get down there. But it should be heel of left hand in line with heel of left foot. Right hand extends over, and you turn and you revolve the body, looking up towards that thumb. Squeeze through this back leg, back foot 45 degree angle again. Driving through the heels rather than the toes. You drive through the, the heel, you use the glutes. You drive through the heel, the toe, more quadriceps. Okay, from there, pendulum up. Turn the feet through again. I'm gonna move back. Bend through the front knee, 45 degree angle, warrior two. Right hand comes down, outside of right foot. Left hand comes up over the top, spread the fingers apart, and you wanna be trying to, stay where you are, you're trying to pin this arm and this leg in towards each other. That's where you'll get that nice strong base support. If they're apart, they're not working together. We need to work together. And so do the arm and the leg. All right, from there, what I want you to do, when you come up to the top, turn back through to the rear again. We have Pavrita Trikonasana, all right, revolved. Uh, revol revolved side angle. We turn the hips through. Now usually you take your hand down to the outside. What I say you should do is hands together, turn the elbows upwards but draw down with the shoulders. Right elbow hits the outside left knee. Watch it, guide it down. Everything should be slow and controlled. This is where people usually go wrong is that they try to move quickly. All right? I mean we try to move quickly through life as well. Maybe take this moment to slow the body down, slow the breath down. Good, revolve the way. Push in through that elbow. We'll take the body up a little bit more. Squeeze through the right bum tree. Okay, eyes come down. Rise up to the top, keep the hands together. Turn through, bend through the front knee. So we're revolving it again. Left elbow, look at the left elbow. Watch it down onto the right knee. If you've got weak glutes, then probably what's going to happen here is that your knee's going to want to drop into the centre on the front leg. So you push it out onto that elbow and you use this strength, this newfound strength. You start to activate all these muscles. This is what's so good about this, this series is that it hits so much musculature. Turn and look up towards the guy. Push through the left elbow, rise up. Okay, head comes round towards the front. We're gonna go into some different postures now. So left foot comes up towards the top. It's actually quite hard to do that. Four different movements. What we're gonna do, hands down by sides. Again, Sandistiti, look at the end of the nose. If you wanna take a drink now as well, I'll do a couple of extra breaths so you can get a, a little bit more time there. Draw the shoulders back. Let's just see what time we're on here. If anyone can see me there. Okay, hands down by the sides. In fact, take another breath there. Keep holding, keep holding. All right. So, from there, hands down by the sides. Step back with the left foot. All right, what we're gonna have here is both of your big toes turn in towards each other, heels out. Hands onto the hips in this position. Squeeze and tuck through the bum, look into the sky. Exhale with a flat back. Flat back, push the bum out. If that's you and that's really tight, then start to fold through the body. Take your fingers down in line with the toes. If you can't get there, maybe bend your knees a little bit, all right? This is maybe the first time you've done this and it's not about trying to compare yourself to what I'm doing. This, again, like I said, is a practice for you, no one else. Plant the palms on the floor if you can. And then again, enlarge and you're pushing the mat away from you, head coming in between the legs. Push, 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 push. Give you a dry breath. I'm only going to spend a couple of breaths on each of these. 
All right, from there, hands onto the hips, rise up with the chest, inhale up to sky, pin the elbows back. So elbows are back, we inhale up to sky, we exhale forward fold, draw those elbows in towards each other, hey. <laughs> and the heels, pointing outwards, toes pointing inwards. You may be not even looking at me here because you're concentrating, which is good, just ignore me. I'm just looking at the screen in between the legs. All right, from there, come up into the flat back position, rise to the top again. Draw the shoulders back, use all these postural muscles, they'll be activated. Take the hands down, interlink the fingers, palms of the, or the heels of the hands apart. Inhale, exhale, over the top. Hands over the top, again. Good, from there, keep the heels out. Hands come up and over, don't worry if you can't get that there. And if you can't even get them off your bum, you're still here, you're still doing it. You're working hard, and you're doing well. Inhale up to the top, hands onto the hips, okay slide the hands down the legs, again a little bit like that uh, Padmasana where we had hold of our big toes, I want you to do this but in a, a wide leg position, pull the elbows out, pull up on the big toes, push down with the big toes, head comes down, push your bum towards the sky, exhale, pull the head as if it's trying to get pulled between the legs. Coming on to a little bit of a, a balancing one next. Look forward to this, there's always a click of favorite in the class, this next one. I can feel the smiles from the other side of the phone. All right, from there. Rise up a flat back position, hands come onto the hips, up to the top of the chest. Turn the foot through towards the front of the mat. In fact, we've got one more posture before that. Feet come up towards the top. All right, from here, this is again a little bit more of a dodgy one um, in regards to, depends if you've got the mobility through your, through your shoulders. I'm gonna show you this hand position before we even go on to the uh, actual posture. Now, if you look at my hands here, what I'm trying to do is a, a namaste behind my back. So I'm trying palms together, pushing the elbows outwards. Now, like I said, don't push them, it doesn't feel like it's gonna go. What you can do is a little bit of a, um, an alternative is, same thing that we just did with that forward fold before, take the hands, uh, the hands so that the fingers are interlinked and then bring the hands over the top of the head. So, same position with the legs that we did with the, the extended triangle. We have to step backwards again, so we go left foot back, turn the feet through, from there, find that position. Center through the legs, lock the legs towards each other, pull up pelvic floor, draw in TVA, draw that belly button in towards the spine, all these locks going on. Now, bring the palms together behind your back. Doesn't matter if you don't get it right, don't concentrate on it too much. This is quite confusing. Now what you do, ground in through the floor, push the chest along, nice flat back, keep going over. Last thing to come down is the head towards this knee. Find the stability there. Pull those elbows back. Right down into this posture. You breathe, breathe, breathe. Head comes up. Rise up with the chest. Turn the feet through, back to the other way. Now you're probably finding out at this moment in time that, you know what, you've probably got one side that is a little bit less stable than the other. And this is where we have to try and iron out these imbalances because when we go imbalances, especially if you're a runner as well, then repetitive movements are gonna cause these repetitive strain injuries. If you have these imbalances between the sides, we're trying to work through these movements, single leg movements, to try and create the strength, to try and find the balance in the body, to find the balance in the mind, to bring balance into our life as well at the same time. From there, hands come forwards, hands down by the sides. This is where we get into the crazy stuff. Now, what you can do here, um, if you've got a belt, then you can use a belt. But, and if you, if you can't do this, what I want you to just do is to go into uh, the tree pose. 
Now, tree pose, I'm going to show you first so that we can go into it and then we get into the mental stuff, which is grabbing onto the big toe, head down. All right, from here, tree pose. What I want you to do, hands on the hips, draw pelvic floor, draw the belly button in towards the spine, squeeze the left bum cheek, the glutes, the center of core stability. From there, turn this knee outwards, start to find a fixed point. Don't look at me at this point in time, unless you sort of need to, if you know this pose. Then I want you to try and shuffle this foot up. And what you can do is grab it with your right hand, pull it into the inside. It depends on how stable your um, trousers are to not slide, which mine aren't very stable. So I actually prefer the other pose that we're going to do. Hands up into the sky and hold there. And just stay here. Okay, stay here. If you want to stay there whilst we're doing the crazy stuff, or you want to try the crazy stuff. If you've got a belt, you can tie, put it around your foot. I'll show you what to do. Use it as a bit of a rest if you don't want to do any of these ones. Put it under the middle of your foot. Start to turn through until you get this. Once you're in a flat back position, if you can't actually grab your toe, if you're far, far away from your toes, then use the strap. And what I want you to do here is, go nice and strong and steady on this left leg and pull this right foot out towards the front. And you want to hold it there. Okay? If you don't need a strap, sometimes that balance is really bad on this one. So we go out with the foot from there, and then we go head down towards the knee. And we hold, I'm just going to do a couple of breaths here. And then we rise up towards the top of the chest. Right foot comes out to the side. As you can see here, a little bit of a struggle. Let go to the left hand side as well. Keep it there. Back round to the side, to the front. Head down for one breath. Breathe it out, stay with it. Chest up. Extend the right leg out to the front, hold there. Just for a couple of breaths, inhale. Tap that, step behind the mind. Keep that foot up. Exhale, right leg comes down. That is a tough one. All right, left hand side. Use the strap again if you want to. Wind it down. Find this flat back position. Do the same thing. Bang, 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 bang. But then let go of the strap or the belt. Now, let's do this. One side is better than the other. Can't remember which one's the best one for me. If you want to go into tree pose on that other side, then feel free as well. So start to build it up. Grab that big toe. Extend it out to the front. Head down, hold there, hold, 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 keep it there, keep it there, one more breath, you see I'm shaking here, it's not easy, left leg comes out, head goes to right, hold there, okay, head back in, I'm supposed to do five breaths in the actual series but we're speeding it up a little bit, head down, touch the knee, Back up with the chest, extend out to the front, hold there. Hold, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. Two, one, and drop through. Give those legs a little bit of a self massage. They will be feeling it. Okay, from there, we go into this intermediate sun salutation. How's everyone feeling? Quickly write if you've got any comments. How are you doing? How are you doing? You feeling good? If you've got your phone already uh, set up and you don't want to move it, then feel free to leave the, uh, leave the comments till the end. Keep going. You're doing really well. Again, if you want to stop at any point of it, then feel free to do that. Grab yourself a drink at this point in time. Here we go. So, this intermediate sun salutation, and then we go into a few ground postures. Probably going to run over the hour. The ground postures, we're going to do about three, four, and then a little bit of the ball work, a little bit of a guided meditation. Now, these are all movements that we've done previous to, previous, uh, previously in the actual sequence. So there's nothing here that you haven't done before. Bring yourself into Samasthiti position. Draw the shoulders back. Squeeze the bum together. OK. 
Okay, look at the end of the nose. Regulate the breath, find this composure. Inhale. Exhale. All right, from here, we drop into face pose. Hands into the sky, flat back position. Exhale, forward fold. Hands up to the ankles, head down. Inhale, halfway lift. Push the bum towards the sky. Plant the hands down. Jump back into Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot comes through to the front. Drop the back heel. We go into Virabhadrasana, Warrior One. Hands up. Sink through this front leg. Now it's five breaths on all of these. So it's a little bit different than the last one. You're just gonna maybe feel a little bit more of a burn through these thighs. Squeeze that back leg. Make sure the weight on that front leg is on the heel and not on the toe. Look up at the thumbs. Find stability in the whole of this body. Now keep the hands where they are. Turn the feet through towards the rear. Bend through the front knee. Rise up. Look at the thumbs, hold there again, five breaths. Maybe your arms are getting tired here, maybe your, um, your upper back is getting tired. Never compromise the lower back. If you start to get a lot of pain through the lower back, then feel free just to have your hands out into this next pose, which is warrior two. Look over the middle finger, draw the shoulders down, bend further through, 90 degrees. Push that front knee out, don't let it drop through. Use the glutes, the glute med. These external rotators on the outside of the hip. Glute min. Hold there. Pull out, next one's pull, I'm pulling your arms either side here. Keep the arms there. Turn through, last one. Bend through the front knee. Breathe out, breathe out. Breathe in. Ujjayi breath. Keep the composure here. Make sure the weight's back. It's actually quite handy seeing the, the camera here because I can look at my positioning, which is great. Mm, exhale, hands pendulum down here. We come back, Chaturanga Dandasana, inhale, face and dog. Exhale, down face and dog. Adam Svasana, breathe out and in through the nose. We inhale and exhale. Slow everything down. Bend the knees, jump. Plant the feet, look long. Exhale, forward fold. Sit down with the bum. Rise the hands into the sky. Exhale, forward fold here. Jump back. Chaturanga, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, and what you actually do in the normal series is you would jump up and you bring your legs all the way through to the front. Okay, but I obviously don't want you to do that. I just want you to do a little bit of a jump in towards between the hands and then sit your bum down. We're going to do maybe three postures here. Now, all of the standing postures start from Samastiti, all right? Hands down by the sides. All of the ground postures work from Dandasana, all right? Dandasana, hands out between, on the outsides of your, your hips, and we turn the toes up. Try and turn the little toes towards your head. Draw the shoulders back, feel the whole back body activate. Lengthen up through the spine, inhale. Chin lock, chin goes down towards the chest, creates even more restriction in the throat. We start to regulate the breath a little bit more. Okay, four variations of forward fold coming right at you. Now in all of these forward fold positions, if you can't get down towards your feet, maybe think about using the belt again. Probably should have told you at the start of the class to get the belt, but I forgot, sorry. 
Um, so next time, next Monday, make sure you bring the belt. You can also grab onto your shins here, all right, and pull yourself down. Well, what do you do? Straighten up through the spine, see? This is probably this natural position to be in. Push up the chest, feel the hip flexors engage. Feel the whole of the back body engage. Draw the shoulders back, always trying to keep posture. Postural awareness, this is where we start to take the mat movements and we move it into everyday life. We start to bring this postural awareness and we start to move it into everyday life. And that is the beauty of yoga that instead of doing exercises, sometimes, sometimes when we go to the gym, um, and I love going to the gym, so I'm not, I'm not signing off. Um, when we go to the gym and we do exercises, sometimes we're not fully present in what, what we're actually doing, especially if we're doing like quick movements, all right? Like, like a hit session. But when we're doing things like yoga, we're able to connect into the body, be fully aware of what's going on here, so we even get a little bit of a meditative effect as well at the same time. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Hands into the sky. Look up towards the thumbs, turn the toes up, don't let them become unactivated, then exhale down. A little bit like that standing posture. Grab onto the big toes if you can. Pull the chest along and then the head comes down towards the knees. Only going to do a couple of breaths in each of these because we're running over time already. Alright, inhale into the sky. A little bit like standing again, hands over the top onto the front of the feet, on the soles of the feet, sorry. Palms are hands, soles of the feet, pull yourself down, elbows out to the sides. Breathe it out. If you can't do it, remember what I said, use the strap or just go into a normal forward fold. Inhale up, both hands into the sky. Exhale, forward fold, grab onto the outside of the feet this time, head down. New jai breath in each of these. If you go on, try and stay on the right side of the grimace. If you're grimacing, try and step back from the discomfort. Try and relax the body. You will get so much release if you let your body relax into the stretch. Use the breath to disconnect from the discomfort. Use the breath to send you into the stretch. Hands into the sky. Next one would be, you come round and you grab onto your wrist and head comes down. But that's a pretty hard posture, so just what I want you to do is take one of those uh, postures that we've just done, hand the top, hand over top, hand to the side, whichever one felt most uncomfortable, pick that one, all right, because that's probably the area that you need it most. If you're going outside of feet, try and actually turn your feet into that little toe towards the head, head down. Breathe it out, two more breaths there. Okay, what you would do there is, you would jump through, I'd be off the flipping back of the mat if I did that, and I'd be kicking these sound balls as well. And you'd fire your legs through to the front, and you come into a total opposite um, posture here, which is you're extending everything up, all right? So you're squeezing the whole of the back when you're drawing the shoulders back, head nestles in towards the upper traps, and you try and put these toes on the floor, feel the whole back body ignited here. All right, squeeze the bum, protect the spine. It's not about trying to pull up through the back, it's about pulling through the glutes, pushing down through the heels, body feel through the hamstrings as well. Exhale, down from there. Okay, pretty intense. Okay. Radha Vada Pada Pashimatanasana. Now that is a mouthful. This is a um, half bound lotus forward fold. Now, lotus position, Obviously, this one, okay, feet up and round, but this is half bound lotus. You don't have to worry about getting into that pose and not putting it in because it's pretty, pretty crazy again and it takes a lot, of, a lot of hip mobility to do that. Right foot, you're going to pull it up onto your thigh here. And what we're trying to do from this point is that we are... What you would do is you try and bring your hand round and round the back, but I'm just gonna have it so that we have our foot on top of the thigh. We take our hands in towards the sky like this, and I want you to forward fold again. Now that might be super intense, having your actual foot on the front of your thigh. It might feel like a little bit of a deep tissue massage. Even try and relax this quad, head down. Inhale, both hands into the sky. Right foot comes out, pull the left foot in. Again, up towards the hip. 
Inhale. From that point there, like I said, if you're getting any issues with your knee, with this uh, position, then I just want you to drop the foot down to the inside of the leg. We've only got, I'm going to do one more posture after this, and then we're going to go on to the meditation at the end. Alright, so stick with it, we're nearly there. It's a tough session. Yeah, pulling it all the way up towards the hip, pushing the knee down, inhale up into the sky, exhale forward, fold, head down, breathe out. Inhale, exhale, hands into the sky. Now, what we're going to go into is boat pose. All right, and boat pose is a nice core stability exercise. What you would do again is you would jump and you would jump straight through into this position. Feet up, hands facing upwards, and you hold there. Hold it with me. You actually do this five times. Five times, five breaths in this position. Squeeze the thighs, keep there. Nice V position. Hold, hold, hold. Let's suffer together. Hold it, hold, 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 hold. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then come down with the feet. All right, from there. Soles of feet together. Last one, last one. The last three in one. Interlink the fingers underneath the feet, soles of feet together. Pull up the chest from here. Push the knees out. Think about go any further, man. Trousers are going to rip, and that is not going to be good viewing for you. Draw the shoulders back. Push the chest along. Hold there. We actually should do the chin lock before that, but try and speed up a little bit here. Breathe out and in. Now exhale, drop the head through. Push the knees down to the sides. Head comes down towards the toes. Try not to fidget, try and just be in the stretch. Experience it fully. Keep there, keep there. Raise the head up. Take a big inhale. And exhale, release all of that breath out. Well done for the movement part. What we'll do now is we'll go into the, um, the Shavasana position. So Shavasana position is feet splayed out toward the sides, hands down by the sides, palms facing upwards, and you just relax. And you, you connect into the body and you take a little bit of a, a check over from the head all the way down to the toes. And I'm going to do a guided meditation for you. So take you on a little bit of a journey for this last part. I want you to lie there now. Keep scanning over the body, scanning over the breath as well at the same time. And try to become aware of your senses. Become aware of the sense of smell as you breathe in. Become aware of the sense of touch, this kinesthetic feedback, the body on the floor through these different contact points. Even feel the kinesthetic feedback of the breath moving through your nasal passage, moving through the windpipe the stomach rising. Now bring your mind into the sense of sound. And feel free to put the earphones in at this point. Just using these Tibetan healing bowls. Keep the eyes closed. Take these deep inhales and deep exhales. Start to feel the body fall away. Surrender to this moment. Surrender to this meditation. Use my voice to anchor you in. Now what I want you to do from this point is let the whole of the world fall away around you. 
into darkness. And you're only lying here upon this mat now. So everything starts to fall away. As you lie there, I want you to start to imagine that you're building this new world around you. The map falls away. And underneath you becomes a marble floor. The temperature starts to rise where you are. Keeping your eyes closed, you start to imagine in your mind's eye the palm trees all around you. And you see people going on their day to day business, and right out to the end of your feet, you sense that something is pulling you towards this place. And you start to stand up. You start to walk along this marble floor. You feel the coolness under your feet. And you look to your left and right and you see statues. leading you up this pathway and out to your front you see the opening to a cave and again you feel yourself being drawn to this place and in this cave you hear these sounds and these sounds welcome you further and further in and as you get closer, you start to see that it isn't actually a cave, it's a temple that has been carved into a cave or a rock face. As you become closer and closer, you walk up the steps and you step inside. And you look to your left and your right hand side and you see monks sitting in meditation you feel this sense of peace and calm move over you but right out towards your front you see this liquid pouring out from the wall again it draws you closer and as you walk closer and closer towards it you notice that the colour of the water is multicoloured. It almost has this cleansing feeling towards your body as you get closer and closer towards it. And it pours into this rock pool. And you decide to put your toe into this rock pool. And as soon as you put your toe in, you feel this energy move through your foot cleansing every single part of your foot like it's going as deep as the cells in your body you feel revitalized in this area so you put your other foot in and again you feel this drive up through either leg towards the hip moving through the thigh, moving into the center of the hips. You feel a sense of relief, like it's clearing any tension and stress being held here. You think you wanna go one step further, so you walk up to this waterfall and you put your hands underneath and you cup this multicolored water and you put it onto your face. You 
you feel it move straight into the center of your mind, clearing any thought, keeping you as present and as centered as you've ever been before. You go one step further and you step underneath and you feel this move now through the whole of your body. down towards the steps, each step. You walk along the marble floor, and you lie back down on the mat. And the whole of this visualization falls away you build up the room around, you hear the sounds, you hear, you smell the smells again. But again, as you come back into the room, you feel a sense of peace move into your body and into your mind. And you carry this on through the days ahead. Now start to move the fingers, start to move the toes. Rub your palms together. Place your hands onto your face and give yourself some gratitude. Think of something that you could choose as far as well as your body. And slowly open your eyes into your hands. Spread the fingers apart. And bring yourself back into the room. This light on. Okay. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for taking part. Um, actually, really enjoyed um, taking the class as well. Uh, like I said, it's one of my most um, favorite classes to take is Ashtanga super powerful, super punchy, but at the same time it hits the whole of the body. Um, and the beauty of it is it doesn't change. Now, because it doesn't change, it allows you to see your progress, all right? So if it's a different yoga class every single time, then you don't see necessarily the, the benefits or the progressions that you're getting. With Ashtanga, it stays the same. So you see these little tweaks and these little changes in how you're actually um, functioning and how you're becoming more aware in the movements, how the movements are becoming easier. Last time it felt harder on the third breath. This time it felt hard on the hard on the fifth breath. Okay, so all these little subtle changes, and that's what we need to try and look into. And if you found that difficult, don't worry. This is going to get easier. All right, it'll get easier. Keep tuning in every every week um, and like I said I've got a class on a Wednesday a class on a Friday as well at the same time and in the background at the moment I'm actually creating um, creating a page which you can subscribe to a little bit of a payment a monthly payment uh, if you want to again any of this is choice if you want to do the Monday Wednesday Friday that's all good but it's going to be a page that has tons of classes on that will work on a lot of different things hand balance head balance it'll work on strengthening your body flexibility there's also what it'll be is i'm starting the um a yoga inspired hit session at a at a lunch time as well which will be live and only for a select number of people and also some uh, mind development so mental exercise as well at the same time so if you're interested in that just let me know but Thank you very much for tuning in and have a fantastic evening.